All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy once again for what is kind of becoming a traditional video for the channel each and every year, where I have a crack at picking the top 20 AFL players in the league. Actually, I think the last couple of years I've done top 10s, but this year I found it a little bit harder to separate them. There are a lot of evenly rated players, so I thought I'd stretch it out to a top 20. We are now within seven days of round one commencing, so the footy and all the football content that comes with it is uh, it's about to explode. So this is kind of the start of that for the channel. I did recently upload my ladder predictions as well uh, a couple of days ago, and it's been met with uh, a fair bit of negative attention, which these ladder predictions always do. The most picked apart point in that video was the fact that I thought Adelaide finished second last for some reason, but they finished fourth last last year. From memory, they had to win their last game to avoid the spoon. So I think that's what confused me, but sorry, I got that wrong. But amongst uh, all the negativity that that video received, uh, there was a heap of supportive and, and nice comments as well, guys. So thank you very much. It is good to be back. As I alluded to in my last video, we will be doing a season predictions podcast this weekend. I'll be filming that with Busher. And then of course, following that week, going to have you know just the tips is going to be back this year and with that of course we're also going to be running the footy tipping competition and the afl fantasy league as well so stay tuned for the next video we'll probably start putting that in the description once i set it all up before we get into it i do need to shout out the sponsors of the true footy youtube channel manscape.com where you can get all your male grooming products for all your male grooming needs they've got awesome stuff not just the lawn mole 4.0 which is the actual trimmer but all the liquid formulations and ball wipes that uh, that you really do need so go check out their website and you get 20% off and free shipping if you use the code TRUEFOOTY20. Not only would you be getting great products for yourself, but you'd also be helping out the channel. So cheers, guys. But without further ado, let's crack into this top 20. And I'm going to buck the sort of conventional method I usually go where I start from the bottom and work up. I'm actually going to start at number one. So bearing in mind, this is my own subjective top 20. It's not going to be perfect, I'm sure. But let me know in the comments where you think I should have gone differently. So let's start at number one. I'm going to go with Melbourne's Christian Petrarch. I think I was saying most of last year, I thought Bont might have been the best player in the comp. But for me, you have to weight heavily Petrarca's performance in big games, in particular the grand final, where he was probably it was probably the best Norm Smith performance I've ever seen. Had 39 posies, two goals, but most importantly, he lifted when the team really needs him. But, you know, even just looking at his year across 2021, he led the league in inside 50s. He was third in contested possessions, led the league in score involvements, and was fifth in meters gained as well. So we're talking about a player who is very, very well-rounded and extremely damaging. So just to of the rest, I've got Christian Petrarca as the best player in the comp right now. At number two, I'm going to go with Bonton Pelly, one of my absolute favorite players in the game. He's a huge bodied inside mid, but the fact that he can float forward and kick 31 goals last year, that's an outstanding return for a guy who's primarily a midfielder. He was second in the league last year for inside 50s per game, total score involvements, and total meters gain. On top of that, in a losing effort, he was very gallant in the grand final with three goals and 25 possessions, which probably would have won him the North Smith had the dogs gotten you know closer or probably won. He was also the Brownlow medal runner up, and I think it's just a matter of time before he wins it outright. At number three, I'm going to go with Petrarca's teammate, Clayton Oliver, and his averages of 31.5 disposals last year, seven and a half clearances, five and a half tackles per game were absolutely elite. He also led the league last year in total stoppage clearances and contested possessions per game. So that really speaks to the idea that he is this bulleting inside mid and I think he's just about one of the best in the league to do it. Another player like Petrarca who stands up when his team needs it, but who is also super consistent across the year. So another player who it just seems inevitable he's going to win Brownlow. And number four, I've got Dustin Martin, who hangs on despite an injury struck year last year. He played just the 16 games in 2021 due to that kidney laceration, but he did finish sixth in the league for goal assists per game and ninth for inside 50s per game. I don't feel like I need to sell Dustin Martin too heavily to you, but for me, he's probably still in that top handful players in the competition, but he slid behind the three that I've mentioned. At number five, the third Melbourne Demon in the list and the first key position player, I've got Max Gorn. He led the league for hitouts last year, but he's more than just a prolific tap ruckman. He was great around the ground as well for being third, I think, in contested marks overall too. Last year, he notched up his fourth All-Australian jacket, and while he's had a fantastic career to date, that was probably the best season of his career, so easily a top five player in the comp for me. The sixth best player in the league, in my opinion, is Port Adelaide's Ollie Wines, who exploded last year and won a Brownlow medal that not many people would have seen coming. He's always been considered this good player with a fair bit of potential, but at 27 years old, really hit his straps last year and was, I think he broke the record or equaled the record for Brownlow medal votes. He had 32 and a half disposals, a game and six clearances as well. And I know he won the Brownlow medal and arguably had a better season last year than some of the players I've already mentioned, but I think he's coming from a little further back, so he doesn't quite crack the top five yet, but if he has another year like last year, he probably will go into the top three. 
And number seven, I've got St. Kilda's Jack Steele, who has become an uber consistent inside mid over the last few years, who is both really good inside and also runs really well the other way too. He was sixth in the league for contested possessions last year, but also led the league in total tackles as well, which really speaks to that ability to run both ways. In 29 disposals game, eight and a half tackles, which is just monstrous, and also 6.3 clearances himself per game. So he's really established himself as an elite, consistent midfielder of the competition. At number eight, I've got the first First utility type player and perhaps an unpopular one, but I'm actually going to put Toby Green in my eighth position. He can be an unlikable player if you're not a GWS fan, but let's face it, he's a genuine match winner. And for a medium, small sort of midfield type player to kick 45 goals from 18 games last year shows how dangerous he is. He can push up into the midfield and win his own ball. Of course, I think we, in particular, we've seen that in the preseason, but he's much more dangerous closer to goal. And he's one of those players where stats don't tell the full story, although his stats are pretty damn good too. In ninth spot, I've got Jeremy Cameron, who I still think is probably the best key position forward in the competition. Last year, he played 18 games, notching 39 goals, including the best of which was, I think, a six-goal haul against Richmond. He was a Coleman medalist in 2019 before a relatively disappointing year in 2020 before he switched, obviously, to Geelong last year. Now, with full respect to Harry Mackay, who, of course, won the Coleman medal last year, I've still got Jeremy Cameron as my number one, purely because of what he's done over a consistent period of time. Cracking my top 10 is Carlton Sam Walsh, who you would say had a breakout year last year, although he's been consistently good improving on that sort of linear progression each year. The top end of Carlton is really, really good, but I think it's fair to say Sam Walsh is officially their best player now. And last year he picked up their best and fairest and of course won his first All-Australian jumper. He's a prolific ball winner, winning it nearly 30 times a game last year, but I think his ball use on the outside is also what sets him apart. Finishing fourth in the Brownlow last year is an incredible achievement for a 21 or something year old. So again, another player where it seems inevitable he's going to win a Brownlow soon rather than later. In 11th spot, I've got another Geelong cat. This time, it's Tom Hawkins, who finished second in the Coleman last year and after finals overall, kicked 62. He's been an extremely consistent player over the last decade, notching pretty much between 50 and 60 goals each year. Doesn't seem to be slowing down with age. If anything, he's gotten better over the last two years. And after his Coleman medal in 2020, I feel like, again, he could bob up and win another one before he finishes up. So in my mind, Geelong have the number one and number two key position forwards in the competition. And that's why I rated them so high highly in my ladder prediction video. At number 12, sliding down slightly, we have the 2020 Brownlow medalist, Lockie Neal. Unfortunately, injuries and perhaps being underdone at the start of the year sort of caused him to regress a little bit, but the standard was pretty high after 2020. By the time the season sort of wore on, he sort of got back to his gut running best and had 46 possessions in that qualifying final against Melbourne. For him, he still has the potential to be a top 10 or dare I say a top five player in the comp, but due to his injuries and maybe not lackluster form, but obviously there was a bit of a drop off last year, I feel like others might have just jumped ahead of him now. Now, it wouldn't be a true footy video without me working the Eagles into it somehow in my biased nature, but I'm going to have Nick Natanui as the 13th best player in the comp. This is somewhat validated by the fact that he won another All-Australian jumper last year, and he's just such a, both a prolific tap ruckman, but also a clearance winner as well. He had 31 hitouts a game last year, but also was the number one player in stoppage clearances per game. Averaging 7.2 clearances a game is also very, very handy for a ruckman. Previously, it was just about injuries that were kind of holding Nick back, but he's only missed one game in the last two years. And I think if you're watching the Eagles closely, and I don't blame you if you haven't last year, you'd see just the impact that Nick Nanui has when he's playing. In 14th spot, and maybe this is a harsh ranking, but I've got Jack McRae from the Western Bulldogs, who was the most prolific ball winner last year. He ranked first in disposals and second overall for goal assists, which does sort of demonstrate his impact. He averaged 34 possessions a game last year, which is absolutely monstrous and is a really, really well-balanced midfielder, ranking fourth last year for contested possessions and number one overall for uncontested possessions. At number 15, I have Darcy Parrish bolting into this ranking after an unprecedented breakout season from his perspective. After struggling for a few years at Essendon to really find his groove and establish a permanent midfield position, he became the game's most prolific clearance winner last year and he was fourth overall for total inside 50s. Probably the best stat to demonstrate just how much Darcy Parrish broke out last year is the fact that he doubled his disposal count from 2020. Again, sort of like Ollie Wines, the fact that he has only really done it in this season probably holds him back from a higher ranking, but if he has another year like 2021, he will probably soar up these rankings. At number 16, another player I felt could justifiably be higher than 16th on this ranking. I've got the evergreen Travis Boak. I say evergreen, but I feel like he's actually getting better with age. He finished second in the 2020 Brownlow medal behind Lockie Neal and then backed it up with an impressive 25 votes last year as well. 
If you spend much time watching Port Adelaide at all, I don't need to sell you on the fact that Travis Boak is an absolute champion of that football club and a genuine match winner. At number 17, we have another breakout player from last year who won his first All-Australian jumper on the bench, and that's Took Miller. In the space of a year, he improved his disposal average from 20 to 32, which I know sort of also is explained by shorter quarters in 2020, but either way, that's a monstrous jump. He was also ranked fourth in the league for tackling, and I think he's a renowned player for his two-way running as well. So in a short space of time, he's become an absolutely key cog for the Gold Coast Suns and will continue to be a vital cog going forward if they want to rise up the ladder. At number 18, I have defensive stalwart Tom Stewart from the Geelong Footy Club. He's a player that's just had a reputation of being a great defender, a great interceptor over a number of years. After having the most marks in 2020, he backed that up with the most marks per game last year, and he was second overall as well. I think he's a vitally important player to that Geelong defensive setup, and I think it was telling that when he got injured last year, their performance dropped off. At number 19, I've got the reigning Coleman medalist Harry Mackay from the Carlton Football Club, who again had a breakout season last year. His previous best goal tally was 26 heading into last year, where he kicked 58 goals from 19 games in a side that obviously didn't do too much on the field in terms of actually winning games. To win the common medal despite missing 19 games from memory, there was a concussion against West Coast in the middle of the year. That's an outstanding effort, and he also led the league in marks inside 50 as well. So if Carlton can sort of get their shit together a little bit this year and improve as a team, that could in theory lead to more goals for Mackay going forward. At number 20, this one is possibly more of a legacy pick than what he produced in 2021, but I've got to go with Freeman or Skipper Nat Fife. I can see this one being a little bit divisive. Those who really, really like Fife and rate what he does will probably think this is way too low, but I can also see a contingent of you not liking the fact I've got him in my top 20 at all. It wasn't that long ago Fife was the best player in the competition, taking out the 2019 Brownlow medal, but obviously with what he's produced since, he's been okay, but not really enough to keep him in my top 10. He still had a very serviceable year last year, averaging 24 disposals and with six in score involvements, which generally suggests that when he gets the ball, Fremantle score. I think he's a little bit hampered by the fact that he's been playing forward. Obviously, he's had some injuries and Fremantle will have some development in their young midfield to do still. But with what I think he's achieved not even that long ago, I think Nat Fife is at least a top 20 player this year. So guys, that is my top 20 players of the competition. Let me know in the comments where I got it right and where I got it wrong. If I had to give myself some feedback, I think it's interesting that I haven't got any key position defenders in the competition. The ones that come to mind as the best in the league are obviously Stephen May, Alia Alia, and Jake Lever. But I do also kind of have this belief that maybe systems make defenses more than actual individual brilliance. All of these guys are great players in their own right, but maybe that's why I just favoured the star power of the 20 guys that I picked instead. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've got this anti-defender bias that I didn't even know I have. Let me know in the comments what you think. But that's it, guys. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're enjoying the content. Stay tuned for that podcast that I keep banging on about. Let me know in the comments what your top 20 is, and I look forward to hearing from you. Cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next one.